Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to thank everybody for their support over on Patreon. A huge thank you. We couldn't do it without you guys. Indeed. Okay, so we see all of a sudden now the Atlantic is cooling at a mysteriously fast rate after record warmth. Let me think. When the human body is fighting off an infection, it tends to have a fever and then cools off. Isn't that the case? But then again, there is the natural and there is that which is technological. The scientists, it says, are puzzled. Maybe it's because their IQs are dropping. I don't know. We'll cover that later. Well, I'm not surprised by scientists being puzzled. They're probably busy working on a word for it. Yeah, absolutely. A new word for it. So for over a year, surface temperatures, the Atlantic Ocean hit new highs. And we saw that anomaly in the South Atlantic that seemed to be <laughs> originating around Bouvet Island, which is a mysterious military base, by the way, um, just north of the uh, Antarctic area and between uh, South America and Africa. So in June, temperatures in the Atlantic were 2 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit, 1 to 3 degrees Celsius hotter than normal in much of the ocean, with some areas getting as much as 9 degrees or, you know, that's Fahrenheit again, 5 degrees Celsius warmer than average. Those temperatures were not a one-off as the Atlantic has regularly seen record-breaking levels since March 2023. Just like our revisionist numbers in our economy where they keep saying, well, you know, you know, new jobs created were this. It's wonderful. And then they'll come back and say, well, <laughs> you know, that new job report, it wasn't quite that high. Then they'll come back and say, well, actually, it wasn't as high as the revision. And then they'll come back and say, no, it, it was definitely not as high as the revision. In fact, it's even lower yet. This is kind of what they do with these temperatures, too. Of course, we have El Ninos and we have La Ninas, very complex systems. Yes, they make it, they try to make it purposely complex uh, because, again, the IQs on the planet are dropping like a rock, which is part of the paradigm and the bigger, you know, purpose, ongoing purpose, uh, to keep people, as, you know, Rockefeller said, we just need people to work. We don't need thinkers. We don't want a world full of thinkers. We do not want, you know, everybody having the abilities of a Tesla. Now, this Atlantic cooling, you know, it, it, it's going to be brought up by um, people in certain circles that it could be the Beaufort uh, or Beaufort gyre, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, there is a Beaufort in South Carolina, and there's also a Beaufort in North Carolina, or is it the opposite way around? They're spelled the same, but pronounced differently. But anyway, what happens is when you get um, Arctic sea ice melt to a certain degree, the interaction of the fresh water with the cold water ends up causing a disruption in the Gulf system. And the Gulf Stream uh, cuts off its flow, which cools off the Atlantic, especially up around uh, the UK and Northern Europe. Interesting, Casey did say Northern Europe would be changed in the twinkling of an eye, which many have taken to be uh, tsunami-ish and, and, and all, but also could be a sign of changing weather patterns. When we look at the technology that's in play, uh, then that really throws everything into a tizzy because, of course, what is the big purpose? Record warmth is what they've been selling us. Uh, you know, usually, I would tend to buy on the side of the opposite of what they try to sell us because we all know when the masses sell, that creates an amazing buy opportunity um, for the few, the elites, and vice versa. Well, that's what it's all about. It's all about keeping us separate and keeping them, you know, on a pedestal and keeping keeping them very, very comfortable and keeping us, you know, us peasants, well, keeping us where we belong, where we, we cannot threaten their control. And, you know, if they're controlling the weather and they're controlling the food, well, that kind of, unless we can make our own food and do our own thing, it kind of leaves us at their mercy and they know that. 
Yeah, and the the reality is again, a colder world would would equate to less food, uh, more than a warmer world. Here we have Putin saying Ukraine just attacked Russia's Kursk nuclear power plant. Uh, yeah, we've we've seen so many threats and power plants, you know, on fire or the areas around them on fire. Um, again, it, it's part of everything that they're doing to create the fear. But at the same time, people really die in these wars uh, that seem to be created simply by the power structure without really uh, the masses wanting these wars. They do all they can to sell them. Now, U.S. fertility rape rate it drops to historic low. And so has the sperm count. And, you know, there is this crisis. And, and one of the people that have been talking the most about the fact that Homo sapiens is really in crisis. Homo sapiens is on the path to going extinct is Elon Musk. He, he's always pointing this out. You know, record low fertility rates, record low births, record low uh, sperm counts. Homo sapiens sapiens is in danger. There was that movie too. Is it um, Children of Men? Was that the movie? I think, so. I think yeah, it was a good flick from uh, maybe 2002 or something like that. And it was about the fact that for like a whole generation, people couldn't get pregnant and there were no babies being born. And then finally somebody does get pregnant and it's like a miracle and, and they're off to protect them because dark forces want to get this person. It says a lot about the reality of the world we're in. Again, when we look to all the dead ends on, on, the, on the human family tree, we see uh, that they all seem to come to an end. And we even have uh, <laughs> that group, you know, the, the weefers, the few, uh, that has said this is the last generation of Homo sapiens, or possibly two. When we look to what's becoming such an obvious attack on the food supply, and you do see a, a little bit of pushback here and there. French court orders 4G antenna switch off over cow health concerns. Farmer in central east France said that milk production had dropped by 15 to 20 percent in the days following the antenna installation. This is 4G. And 40 of his 200 cows had died. That's insane. Think about what 5G is doing to people in the middle of the cities. Everybody's going to be sterile. This is you know, where you have to make your choice. Is it worth it for this job that's paying you so much in all these bills? Uh, if you go sterile and you have no chance at having any kids or grandkids, etc., etc., this is part of what humanity's facing. Some really, really big decisions to make. You know, 40 cows, that's a lot. And I'm really glad to see that this farmer got somewhere with the, the system. And, and I think that's a really good example of what other people need to do. If they see that, you know, find a way, climb that ladder, you know, push through, find someone to talk to, follow the path and, and figure out how you can keep your area safe, your cattle safe, because if you don't do it, no one will. And the controllers, they're just going to keep mauling over everyone unless somebody stands up so i'm happy to see that yeah you look at what's trending as says comrade kamala over here and promoted by you know donald trump kamala harris wants communism in in america the reality is uh, you could look at some uh, quote-unquote communist nations and find them living better than we do now in the u.s and you could find the inverse and then again it's one system. These are just labels used to divide. It's one system. That's what people have to realize. When California is going to offer, and they just approved a bill in the Senate, uh, t to allow illegal migrants to buy homes with no money down and no, per no interest. This, this is you know insane. And this is because the world is not operating with the same purpose. The, the power structure does not have the same purpose that we would think it has. It's just that simple. And then we have George tweeting, you know, his 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 hashtag is the Lord is good. Does does he understand that that you know translation? One of them is Yahweh, who is pretty dark. 
in fact a warlord and in fact is is you know part of this control system that's causing iqs to drop well i guess he doesn't understand that's why he has it there uh iqs are dropping people don't pick up the fact that they're under attack in every way shape and form this this is you know a huge huge ongoing structured organized attack on humanity and the entire planet and it's one in which again you have people praising the attackers because they they don't get it they really don't get it aluminum and barium which is dropping before your eyes here as well as other things uh, they do have an effect on the neurons in in our brain and as this says, imagine a population so brainwashed, you could convince them to be terrified of a uh, uh, particular V word there while spraying them openly like bugs. Yeah, you know, they, they unfortunately, now more people get this than ever, but it's still not the majority, is it? I mean, why is it still ongoing if it is the majority? And here we have breaking news. Fluoridated drinking water leads to two to five point IQ drop in children. Now, over what particular point in time? And if we keep drinking fluoridated water, does it lead to a two to five point drop every five years, every 10 years, every 20 years? What is it? How, how, how deep can that drop go? Mm. And you know, it's not just the fluoridated water up against our children. It's the school system. As soon as you put your child into an education system, their IQ begins to drop. It just <laughs> begins to fall. Then there's the fluoride. Then there's the junk food. Then there's the food they feed them at lunch. And say the school is really generous and they give them a, a free lunch and a free breakfast. And it's just so wrong because we know that that food is pure poison. I mean, there's very little nutrition in, in the, the school complex for children, and they're not doing us any favors, and it's like at every turn. As we see this article from Popular Mechanics, American IQ scores rapidly dropping. Yeah. And are we really getting less intelligent? Well, you know, this, this particular article's talking of uh, up to the 1990s, and it talks about a couple of studies uh, this one from the WEF themselves says it's official. You're getting dumber. IQ levels are falling, have been for decades. And this one was looking at the results of 730,000 Norwegian men. And this is um, taking place between 1970 and 2009. So that's a good long period of time. It was everybody that had to report to national service, which was mandatory. And it was also mandatory that you take an IQ test. So men born in 1962 had higher IQ scores than those born in 1991. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I mean, honestly, we are. Every generation is getting dumber. And it's really not that generation's fault. It's all about what they've been eating what they've been drinking, what what they've been breathe, breathing in, uh, what they've also been ingesting through their minds. It's looking at the screens, which, which do have an effect on our consciousness, being so tied to these radioactive handheld machines that people won't let go of uh, for every hour that they're awake. All this is, is adding, and it's not clear what's causing. They know what's causing. They're part of it yeah you know again it, these articles are all over the place so we have dropping sperm count we have dropping fertility rates dropping number of kids being born and plummeting iqs in fact you know if you look at this test and i, I had talked to a couple people about it because it it really uh, made me giggle this is from november 12th uh, november 1912 eighth grade examination and i'll give you guys the link i i don't think i think a vast majority of people would feel this the vast majority of people alive right now would feel this this is really at least here in the u.s you know speaking for the united states it's it's just so obvious what's what's happened you know i remember in school when we had the ability to use calculators. We weren't allowed to use calculators. We had to do everything by hand. Now, you know, oh, of course it's okay to, to use a calculator. 
well, you know, why not think things out? It, it's like playing chess when you're doing uh, arithmetic and, you know, <laughs> this, you know, some of these, it takes a lot of visualization and visualization is the key to manifestation. And this is something that's getting a little bit off topic, but I think it is on topic because the, the more we can visualize, conceptualize, and the stronger we can hold something in our mind, the more we can make it a reality. They're making it so we have very short attention spans. Think TikTok. You know, again, oh, people will say, oh, I don't have a lot of time to watch this video. What did he say? It's like immediately my mind goes, you know, to, wow, this is a perfect example of what they've done to humanity where, you know, you have this TikTok mentality, 60 to 90 seconds, can't focus on anything for long. This is indoctrinated into us. It, it's part of our culture, but it's purposeful. It's so we are not a threat to the system. We don't have an attention span to be a threat to the system. You know, it's 100% all about getting people to not ask questions. You know, if they, if they come out giving you the answers to everything and, you know, punishing you if you don't give the right answers or the answers that they tell you to, uh, you know, people are just going to come grow up and they're not going to question anything because they think they know it all. <laughs> they think they already got everything down. And, you know, some very highly educated people are usually the hardest people to awaken because they have so much vested in their education. The education becomes their ego. And, you know, I see that in, in charts sometimes where the, the person you know, they feel good because they've learned stuff. But really, all the learning that we need is to go within. And and sometimes the simplicity of life really blows me away toward the complexity that they try to make it out there in, in the system. Yeah, you know, one of the questions here is um, how many steps that are two feet, four inches each, will a man take in walking two and a quarter miles? How many people even know how many feet are in a mile now, nowadays? I, I think you have to, we're so used to Googling the answer for everything is part of the, part of the point. If they take the, <laughs> the net away from us for even a little while, people will be absolutely clueless and freaking. They'll just, there'll be, there'll be some that are just sitting there crying because they don't know what to do. They really won't know what to do. A new study has warned that washing fruit does not remove the harmful pesticide residue, which causes illnesses in, in humans. Yeah, again, you're going to have to you know, peel away the surface layer, and then there's still some that's going to sink down because you know, nothing is as solid as it appears. So you know, this is a part of it. It's, it's all the toxin, toxic, toxic overload. If you take ibuprofen, you're destroying the quote-unquote Velcro in the stomach. And yeah, absolutely. Again, all the things that people, we were just talking about cancer causing agents and mucinics. I know um, from years ago, I haven't taken in like 30 years any sort of allergy medications. It was, you know, pre 2000 is the last time I've taken any sort of allergy medications because they do make you foggy. It's really obvious they make you foggy. As we get clearer, it'll become more and more obvious just how much all these normal things, quote unquote, are really harming us. They're causing an inflammatory response. They're wiping out uh, all the balance in our, in our guts and in our systems, which is adding to inflammation, which adds to uh, all sorts of cognitive defects. And this is really important to know because if you're one who just takes ibuprofen and you don't think too much about it because you have sore joints, you know, or you're in a lot of pain. I, I was that person a few years ago. I was in severe pain. I was crying. I was like curled up, fetal position, crying. I needed help for pain. And I really screwed up my system. I mean, it was the biggest train wreck and it's it's because i didn't know about other alternatives that could lower the inflammation and really help me but once i figured that out boy oh boy did i ever fix everything quick and if you're just taking it even nonchalantly you know 
uh, uh, once every few days, it's going to start to eat away at your system and give you that leaky gut. And once you get the leaky gut, your system gets over toxified really fast. And, and there's ways, you know, turmeric is really amazing and clearing up several different types of inflammation. There's like seven different types of inflammation. Please don't ask me to name them, but there are. Turmeric covers all seven types of those inflammation, whereas ibuprofen is only going to cover one or two. So, and there's other things you can take too for, for, for pain. And we should do a video on that at some point because it's, it's a lot better than what you are taking off the shelves. It's, it's not going to tear up your system. It's just going to leave you feeling better. So you have this question, why does this look so much like the Kremlin and the buildings we see in Russia? when it comes from the 1893 Columbian Exposition, Chicago's World Fair, and then they'll tell you that these buildings are really temporary. They're temporary? Look at how beautiful they are. You know, they're, they're so ornate. Uh, we don't build buildings like this anymore. And with those domes and the spires and the attention to detail, you know, it, more and more people are thinking that these buildings were in reality which are depicted and unfortunately most of them many of them are wiped out and gone you know they've been just taken down uh, our leftovers of a civilization that was global that we would call uh, tartary or tartaria again you know the centerpiece of tartary again will look towards asia and russia uh, and that's what you know the official histories will, will tell us but yet there's signs of this global culture all around there are anomalous objects all around. This is called Falling Block in Wyoming. It Look how big it is. Look at the trees around it. This is enormous. Who could possibly move it? I think there's somebody climbing it there. Doesn't it look like somebody? Uh, you know, this is crazy. You don't find straight lines in, in nature this way. Was somebody moving this? You know, did somebody drop this? I mean, it's just real wild to look at. Well, if you look at those lines that are actually going um, across horizontally, that's like a, a tool, you know, that's a tool kind of going down there. That's curious. Yeah, you know, it's it's perfectly, you know, rectangular and, you know, artificially leveled at the top. That's a lot of weight. So they had technology and the ability to move things. This is just so there's so many examples of that. When we look to uh, the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, if this this shows you all the tributaries, the, this is really it's like a vascular network. So we could say that the Mississippi is a very very important artery in in the United States, uh, and even going up into Canada, as far as delivering nutrients uh, to the land and everything around it. And and right now again they're. Uh, even though we've had so many floods and all, the Mississippi is is at a, a, a very, very um, low point. And, you know, again, this is all about toxification. And, you know, it's just a, a, they shouldn't allow the practices that we do have going on in order to gain uh, energy because we don't really need to gain the energy the way they do. They do it just for toxicity. The reason why you have fracking in my mind is simply because it's one of the most toxic ways you can create an energy um or an energy supply well yeah to me i i see the layers in it you know there is one very important layer and it keeps the controllers uh money in their pocket and it gives them control and the other layer is you know, it goes uh, makes people sick and then it feeds the medical system which is the other layer and the medical system is getting plenty of money and people don't really know what's going on and so they go in for um, some type of healing but they're never going to get healing they're always going to get a band-aid and, and it's never going to lead to anything good the only good it does is it keeps those controllers financed it keeps their pockets padded that's it so here we have uh, this is uh, again uh, unexplained mysteries one of the clearest photographs of a bigfoot if you think it's real i'd be curious to see your guys take on this do you think this is real um a lot of detail there it looks pretty clear um definitely has 
a more ape-like face to it. Uh, this this is actually supposed to be, what did he say? Was this from the 80s, I think, uh, when this was taken? Yeah. Um, wow, you know, pretty, pretty curious. Absolutely pretty curious. Um, almost too good, but what do you guys think? I think that he found a toy, and I, I don't think I would try to take it from him. <laughs> he loves it. He's going to be, I don't know, if he just, one of those claws goes in there a little bit deep, he's going to be sad. But, I mean, he's just having such a good time. He loves his wob weeble wobble ball. It's so precious. Again, guys, look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, please make sure you are subscribed. Much love. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.